So I'm going to be using a Gamagatsu B10S in size 1 aught. And for thread, I'm using 140 power thread in chartreuse. If you want to start your thread, um, leave a little space behind the eye. You don't have to crowd the eye. Bring your thread back to start at the bend and then come back up just a smidge it. Then we're going to take our feather. So <clears throat> I've got these three uh, saddles, or actually um, two saddles and a cape. Now the first two saddles, um, I, th I believe they're American, Whiting's American saddle, American hackle. It tends to be a little softer, a little more pliable. For the final one, I'm using a cape, uh, which is a little stiffer uh, feather, which will be good for kind of helping keep that bent outward. So this one is chartreuse, uh, grizzly dyed chartreuse. And again, like I said, I think it's American. So once you select your hackle, um, you want to measure out one, two, about two and a half times the hook shank. And then we just peel off some of the fibers past that. Cut that off clean. And you can tell that this wants to angle up. So we're going to tie it on the far side of us, which is your side right now, since you're angling towards me. Now, when you tie in just the stem, a lot of times if you tie it right on top, that'll be straight, but a lot of people will want to tie it on the center. The problem is it'll want to rotate it. See how that kind of starts to turn? And it's not, um, it's more of like flat wing. So you want to tie right on top, but you want to give a little, uh, tie in a little bit into the, the fiber and that'll actually help keep this straight and won't rotate at all. I'm going to do the same thing. Try to measure this one out to be about the same length. And so we tied a little bit back with the thread to give the feather something to grip onto. You don't want to just start tying on bare shank or it's going to be very, uh, um, it's going to be slick and therefore it'll make the feather rotate even more. You don't want that. All right, so that's tied in. Now for the olive. We want this a little shorter. At least this is how I tie it. You know, these gurglers, gurglers can be tied in multiple different colors. Um, and, uh, I mean, you can put craft fur on the back, deer hair, whatever, whatever you want. So as soon as I said it, totally forgot, uh, I need to add deer hair. Hmm. Bucktail. So I apologize, guys. I need to add some bucktail. So I have this olive bucktail clump. Bucktail is just going to help keep uh, this stabilized. Um, it is a little stiffer of a fiber. So clip off just a small amount. And pull out the under fur, any fuzzies. We're going to tie this not super long, okay? Make sure that's just right on top. Cut that off at an angle. All right, so then clean up that section. Come back to right before that tail. Now we can tie in these sections of tail here, the feathers. Sorry about that, guys. 
We already have this pre-measured now. You can see it's partially the same, or partially the length of the other feathers. So we're just gradually getting a uh, shorter feathers for the tail. There we go. There's that one. We're going to measure this one out to the same length. Now finally for these, and you can see there's much more curve to these, okay? So it'll help this splay outward. We're gonna keep this rather short. Um, again, maybe a, a little, we're gonna, you know, a little shorter than the, the last one that we just tied in, the olive. The same exact method. Semi on top, and then wind into those fibers you can see what that's doing it's playing outward you know what let's get that a little better should never have a problem with going back and redoing it if you're not happy with where it sits it's totally okay this really has to be right on top this one sometimes those there we go wanted to really angle there we go so let's do that on the other side The tail that's pretty much it you can see you've got multiple different lengths of feathers this is going to move a lot different um, in the water this is going to create kind of almost like little legs so it'll look like a, a frog in a way um, this will move quite a bit um, this has always worked for me but go ahead and get creative on your tail you can tie it however you want we're going to prepare the foam so you'll need some uh, spray glue i like this gorilla glue it works well you know, the best option is really to use six millimeter for this size, but all I have is three millimeter in chartreuse. So I'm gonna glue two pieces of chartreuse together. Do this outside, put down a piece of paper, newspaper, whatever it may be, um, spray one side, and then have a book handy. A book is really helpful. You really need to have a book handy because um, you need to put, put that on top of the, the foam to keep it together. Um, otherwise it'll wanna kinda um, separate. So that'll really help kind of keep it glued together. So spray one side, then place the other piece of foam right on top of that. Try to get the edges as close as possible. And then put the book on top and let that dry for about five, 10 minutes. And then come back. And if you want to add the red, like I've got, um, you want to use razor foam. You just cut the razor foam into a strip. Spray the one side of the razor foam, then place it on top of just the edge of the chartreuse foam and then turn it upside down put the book on top again and let that dry I you know I try to leave it there for at least 10 minutes so when you come back you want to you want to cut this to about the hook gap so I'm going to be tying five I highly recommend tying quite a few of these in a row um, it will make it a lot easier um, just tying one takes a long time but tying multiple goes a little quicker each one so definitely recommend um, so I'm gonna tie five I am selling a five pack of these to someone and then you're left with this so you're left with these strips here you got the red here you want to make sure when you're tying it in obviously the red goes down right now this is too long so if I was to do that you'd have you can see where where that ends it's way too long you want that to end just right there so we're gonna cut off Maybe about that much for now. You might have to adjust. It's better to cut off less than more. And then when I cut this, it kind of gave like a little bit of an angle, as you can see. We're gonna just kind of fix that up a little bit. Make that a little straighter. 
And then we want to cut a notch into the back. Okay, like so. And if we were to measure this, so you want to make sure that goes back far enough. That's about right. So you can see now how long this is. It's about almost two times the length of the hook. So we are going to tie this in right to the back. Again, you need this strong thread, 140 power thread. You want to make sure it goes all the way to the tail. Otherwise, when you pull up, a lot of the tail is going to be um, exposed, or at least thread wraps before the tail will be exposed. I'm going to kind of bend over the hook like that and tie down. And then we're just going to do a loose wrap up, and we're going to see where this ends. And that's about right. We need a little bit of space. Here, let's uh, turn this and see where that's going to end up. And that's about right. So I'm happy with that. That's the length we need. So let's go ahead and undo this. Since I'm going to do five of these, I want to make them all the same. I'm going to undo this. And then I'm going to go through and cut each individual one to that length and put the same notch in. All right, there we go. That one, let's keep doing it. Now I got all five cut. You can just come back through, tie that back on. Try to get that back turn as straight as possible. You don't want that kind of at an angle because when it comes back forward that's gonna it's gonna look really bad so try to tie in as straight as possible and then you just want to work this down okay there's a lot of foam here and it all needs to be worked down there we go. Let's fix that tail a little bit. See, that comes about perfect. So now we've got this last one. This comes to about a 10. You can see where the fibers go. Um, you want to measure that out correctly. Um, 10 is a good Um, good width and then you want to tie in with the the fibers, the fibers angling that way and you want to tie just the tip in here so we're just going to get that tied in excuse the trash can the apartment decided to just do the trash right now <laughs> so you're going to hear that probably. Hopefully you don't, but <clears throat> I do. And now we're going to take some Starburst dubbing. You can use any dubbing that you want. We're just going to cover all this up. I like the Starburst. It's very, very shiny. It's a pretty stuff. We're just going to dub in just the tip here we got a lot in the back and you'll see the trick here you just want to cover all that and you just basically grab it and you can see it just starts winding itself on no need to dub the entire thing when you're using a big surface area like this you can just do it that way we'll need to add a little more so starburst dubbing is pretty much the same thing as uh, ice dub it's just a flash tinsel type dubbing um, it's good stuff. This stuff is much less expensive than the ice dub. And I think just as good. I don't, you know, have a need for the other, personally. All right. So there we go. We're up to the front. You can tell I got like a little taper going on. It's about what you want. 
you want to come in and start wrapping those fibers around and you don't need to make it super tight but try to make it even even wraps one two th three four five six seven kind of twisted on me that feather but that's okay it's gonna all be covered up for the most part I did seven wraps that's about what you want seven or eight somewhere around there okay cut off the waist you le I left a little bit of the fuzzies on the front it's a little stiffer in the back we're just gonna trim the fibers off the top here All right, then we pull this up over and we want to make sure you can always stretch it a little bit and that comes to about where we want it. I'm going to pull these fibers rearward a little bit. They're kind of in my way, wrap back up on them. I'm going to come back. You don't want to be right at the, the hook eye. Be back just a little bit. And wrap this. You can see I'm kind of bending it up over the, the hook there. And you want to wrap right behind the hook as Ooh, need a little more space there. Let's pull it up a little more. There we go. That's right. All right. So since I bent it over a little bit, you can tell it's kind of rounded out. It's about even on both sides, and you just want to keep cinching down tighter and tighter, but not too tight. You could break this um, or cut the uh, foam with the thread. All right, so now we pull this up, and then we wrap underneath it quite a few times. You're helping lift that a little bit. Um, by the way, I've had a couple people say, oh, I can't put the, the um, tippet through there. But you just lift up right before you do with one hand and then slide it right through. You can put tippet in. So keep lifting. Just get a few thread wraps under there. All right. And then come back to right here because we're going to add some legs. All right, so I've got this. It's a, it's a skirt for like a jig for regular bass fishing. So I'm going to get four off of it. Line them up as best as you can. All right, and we're going to tie the back a little longer than the front. And just lay it right on top. Two loose wraps. Then take two of them. Oop. Make sure it's the same two. Bring two around to the side, bring two around to the other side. Position them correctly. And then we're going to take a little more of this ice dub and you can see that they want to come together this ice dub will help kind of keep them separated a little bit and also add a little more flash
come up under. Add a couple more wraps underneath. Now, when I whip finish, I've got this little section on the side here that I just kind of hang. It's like a little, I uh, hang my thread. And that way, um, I can come in, pull everything back, and whip finish. Making quite a few turns here. Tighten that really well. Now, I am going to super glue everything. And you'll see what will happen with these legs as well. I'm going to trim the legs all to the same length. We're just coming right past um, the front here. And the back legs will come right past the back. We'll do the same thing on this side. All right, so I've got this super glue. The first thing, we're going to come in. We're just going to put a dot in between the legs here. Just wipe some in there. A little bit will get on the legs and we just want to pull the legs like that. And that will set that glue and help keep that angled straighter. We'll kind of angle them up and back as you can see. It's a little better. It's not that great. Let's do it one more time. Might, might not have gotten enough glue on there. A little better. That side's good. All right. Then we're going to come in and we're going to put some glue, pull this back right at the whip finish here. Make sure that stays together. Don't super glue the eye. Pull that back. Kind of angle it up a little. And then final for the trimming, I like to trim a little notch right at the head. It kind of rounds that off. And there we go. You can fish it like this if you wanted chartreuse. Um, I like adding some spots. It'll make it more like frog-like. Now I've got this shark pack, pack marker in olive. I'm just going to add some spots. So it's got this chisel kind of tip to it. I'm just going to go around with the chisel tip around the edges. You can see what I'm doing here. We're going to do the same thing underneath here. Just put a couple little spots. And on the side too. I like coloring the entire cutout section. I don't know why, but I'll color this entire part. Kind of gives like eyes on the front a little bit. I'm gonna put a couple uh, small tiny dots on the front. I'm gonna do the same thing along the sides here. bigger ones. Just have fun with it. All right, so now with the bigger, we're just going to put a bunch of smaller dots along the top. And there we go.
there is the gurgler. This is more of like a larger bass sized gurgler. Um, you could tie it in other colors to be salt water. Um, not too many frogs, I don't think, are in salt water, but you know, get creative with it. Have fun. I know a lot of guys will um, do the two tone like this, which is kind of nice. So you can put actual, you know, maybe chartreuse on bottom, olive on top, right? Um, you could do, I see guys with hot pink and chartreuse. I see, um, you know, more bland colors like browns and. Um, just get creative, have fun with it. Um, they come in wide range of colors for the for the um, foam, and then you know the the markers. You could just fancy up, put stripes down the center, put you know, whatever you want. Um, have fun with it. And I think this will this makes a really good uh, top water fly. Easy to tie relatively. Um, I find poppers tend to be a little more difficult, especially with having to coat it with the resin and and all that um, just takes longer. And these are quite effective for topwater uh, bass and they, they do pop. So if you really kind of build this to angle upward like that, um, you can really put a lot of thread wraps in there, maybe super glue it up a little more. Um, you can really get a lot of water spitting, a lot of uh, pop in action. Um, but it's called a gurgler for a reason. It does just basically, it sits right under the water and when you move it, it kind of makes like a gurgle sound um, and that's why it's called gurgler. Um, it does push some water. Um, it is a very very effective fly for bass and uh, you could tie it wide range of uh, sizes. I would say this is about as small a hook as you could do with like the six millimeter basically foam. You'd want to move down to uh, three millimeter if you're doing like a size two um, and then even smaller like the two millimeter for much smaller than maybe a, a 10, I would say. Um, but play with it, have fun. I think you guys will like it, so. So guys, I also sell flies. Um, this is one I am selling. I'm selling five of these, plus actually some poppers for this gentleman. Um, I try to keep my prices as good as possible. But as you can see, I take my time on these, make sure that they're good. I don't rush through them. I cement the heads. I make sure everything is durable, is tied really well, and I take my time on them and make them perfect for you guys. So I, I can't really go super cheap on these, but I generally try to keep the prices close, as close as possible as to most fly shops. I mean, there's some fly shops that might be a little less expensive than me, some a little more, um, but generally about the average of what most fly shops in America uh, charge for their flies. But I obviously, do a little better quality, I believe, and um, I think you guys would see that as well. So let me know. Uh, the best way to get a hold of me is through Instagram. Find me on Instagram and then just private message me on there and tell me what you want to buy. It's simple. I'll tie them up. I don't charge you until I'm done, and as soon as I am done, um, I send you pictures for you to approve, and then once you approve these uh, the flies, then I send you an invoice. Um, it is through PayPal, but you can use a credit card, you can use anything, you don't even have to have PayPal to be able to use it. Um, it's just a way for me to send an invoice and then you to pay, and then I ship them. As soon as that happens, um, it allows me to print a shipping label right there, and I ship them out to you. Um, I've made hundreds of orders, if not a thousand orders, um, and everyone seems to be quite happy with them. So I highly recommend um, contacting me right on uh, Instagram. That's the easiest way. I can send you pictures that way. But if you don't have an Instagram, not everyone does, um, you can go to my About section. And right below, um, I think it says Contact or um, uh, Personal Info or something like that. Just click that. There's like a little button at the bottom. Um, it'll open up to my email in the About section on my, my um, YouTube home screen there. So. You can do that, shoot me an email in the same process. Well, I appreciate you guys watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Also hit that like button, it helps me out, it helps YouTube know that you like these videos, um, helps with the algorithms. And same with the commenting, so please comment. Uh, let me know what you think of this fly, anything you would change, what colors you would tie it in, what, um, what tail maybe you would use, if you'd use a feather tail like that or something else. So let me know. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear from you. And I try my best to comment back to every single person. Sometimes I don't have a lot of time. So 
sometimes there are shorter answers, uh, but I, I try my best here. Um, I, I, I comment as best as I can to every single person. Although with uh, thir almost 38,000 subscribers, um, it's becoming a little more difficult to comment to every single person. So if I don't comment to you, I apologize. It's nothing against you. It's just uh, sometimes I get a little busy. Um, it might take a little longer than normal, but um, I will try to at least make a comment or acknowledge that I saw uh, your comment uh, to everyone. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. Now you go catch some fish.